So I am filling some seams and I thought I'd just do some uh, random battling regarding uh, putties and filling seams. Um, there's a number of different putties I use and since I have this out and it dries very quickly let me just uh, apply this. So I'm using a little spatula type shaped uh, tool here. Wax carver, you may call it, depending on uh, what company you buy it for. It's sold under different names. So basically, it's just a little metal-looking spatula, and it's mushing the putty in uh, along the seam lines. Nothing pretty right now, since I'm sanding this down later. I'm not uh, being too cautious. If I was. Uh, Depending on the situation, I might do this a bit more cautiously and then thin it out with some acetone if uh, if sanding wasn't an option, but uh, it's okay now. And I'm trying to go towards the higher side. So if this this is one piece here and this is the other, if this is higher than this one, drag it towards the higher side so then the putty gets uh, wedged into the gap that I'm trying to fill. I'm looking for uh, looking for and feeling for uh, the edge. There's a couple different putties I use. Um, this is uh, Tamiya putty, which is really good. It's hard to find because like every six months, Tamiya has to go through leaps and hurdles to uh, get their stuff imported uh, to the U.S. So this stuff's pretty good. It can be thinned out with acetone if you want to make a, like a more liquid putty you can brush on. Uh, the dry time is uh, a little on the long side. You have to let this dry a few hours, sometimes overnight, depending on how thick you put it on, before you can go through and um, sand it down. I have some flat spots here for one. I already did this once and I sanded sanded the rounded areas here a bit flat, so I need to try to fix this. Okay, there we go. So yeah, to me a putty very good. Um, the only negative is that it dries very slow. Uh, what I use most often is Squadron Green Putty. Uh, a lot of people say bad stuff about Squadron. But actually, I like it. It works pretty good. It's um, a bit coarse, so it does fill things uh, up. But if you have to sand it a lot, you'll start. Uh, it'll start kind of breaking down. You'll start getting a lot of uh, like little pinhole uh, holes and gaps if you if you sand it down a whole lot. Uh, it does fill in very well. Uh, I also have some squadron white putty. Now, there is a difference between th these two. This one is much finer. This one is pretty much garbage. Y if you fill this in a gap, um, it kind of sh it shrinks slightly as it dries, and so you fill in a gap, you sand it down, and then that gap is still there. So this stuff, not that great. Green, it's a lot better. Um, it fills in rough gaps as long as you're not doing a whole lot of sanding. What I really like about it, it dries fast. And you can dry in about 15 minutes and it's ready to sand. Um, I also have, I haven't used this too much, uh, Bondo. This is glazing and spot putty. They make a bunch of different types of putties. Uh, there is another kind which is really expensive. It has like a, a separate hardener to it. It's called some other type of putty. That's supposed to work really well, but it's it's really expensive and it's a two-part putty. Uh, this is similar to the green putty. I think this dries, this sands a bit better. Uh, I haven't played around with it a huge amount. I used it on some project. I think it was the Romulan Bird of Prey. But uh, again, this isn't too bad. And um, what was the other one I had? Oh, the one I had and then I kind of lost yesterday was uh, Vallejo makes something called Plastic Putty, which I just barely had a chance to try. I used just a small amount of it. 
um, and then the tip clogged and I tried to clear out the tip and I was squeezing the tube and the back of the tube blew off and I got I had all the putty all over my hand and I had to throw it away and I was really pissed off because it was a waste of like five bucks and I didn't really get a chance to play with it to see how well it worked um, I did fill in a few gaps with it it seemed to work pretty well I heard some really good reviews about it uh, somewhat similar to the uh, the Tamiya putty it had a slightly different consistency to it um, I may try it again I'm just kinda of pissed off that the back was sealed so poorly it just blew off but um, so yeah there you go there's a quick little putty review uh, I would say get one of these or at least two of these this one if you want some quick fills this one or this one and this stuff works on metal or plastic then once it dries right now I have these uh, tester sanding sticks because my local store that makes their own is out has been out for a couple months so I had to make do with these uh, I don't like these as much as my local store ones because they have uh, the smaller end and this is very very useful having a smaller edge you can cut these uh, I just really don't want to chop them up just yet but then this, the foam sanding sticks you can just wash them out and reuse them over and over and over again and you have different uh, roughnesses on each of these some of them are even mixed and then I got what I should have used on uh, these instead of the sticks is my homemade uh, sanding jig here for sanding round surfaces you look back uh, six months or so and you'll find a video on how to make this thing I think it's called how to sand round surfaces because this will follow oops, follow the curve of the plastic so I don't have to risk I don't risk filing any uh, the edge smooth if I keep going like this with this I'm gonna get a smooth uh, edge on top of the round surface. This conforms and I don't have to worry about that. So that's it. Quick rambling about uh, putties. So I'm slowly getting the lights into place here and um, here are the two small ones, the two small headlights on the front. And I clipped off the uh, mounting pins to make room for the lights, drill the holes and I put uh, aluminum foil in here to uh, at, act as a, uh, a light block and I was just planning on putting my three millimeter white lights in like so and then I realized why the heck do I want to do that when I can actually put them through the holes I drilled so the aluminum foil here is now pointless since they're going to be mounted like this and the cap's going to go on like so and I painted the inside with a thick layer of black paint to also help with uh, light leak. But by pushing them forward, I have less light leak to deal with. So, using the hot glue gun, this lop down there. Quickly get my light in position. And there we go. For the center headlight, um, this one I can't push all the way up because I need some of the light to come out the side holes as well as the center. So I moved this LED back a bit. And also I wired up another one. I used uh, 990 ohm uh, resistors on all the lights. Um, the higher the number, the less intense the light will be. And I decided to redo this one with a, a 330. Um, just because I wanted a bit more light out the center so there's a bit of variation and also I could use trying to light this in the front I could use a bit more light intensity anyway uh, this one needs the aluminum foil around it definitely since it is so far uh, back and I just made a little shelf of uh, epoxy putty here and same on the other side I just need to close it up Oops, I'm going to trade my wire in place here. Get my 
LED straight. The epoxy putty will uh, holds the wire in place and also prevents any light leak going out the back. So um, now I just need to seal this up and uh, I can put the front on. Finishing up on the lighting here, I got the um, two secondary lights virtually finished. Still got to put the uh, the center light together, but this came out pretty cool here. There we go, and there is no light leak. That's like a first there. That um, just simple acrylic black paint uh, painted inside these two little uh, nozzles took care of pretty much all the light leak. So uh, I'm happy with that. I got the center light that still needs a bit more work. I have to uh, have to trim a bit more off because one of the uh, little light vents here was blocked. So I gotta get that together. But here is the cool thing that I got today. I got LED tape. This is uh, from a modeler's brand. LED tape and this is awesome stuff. So you get a strip of this stuff. It comes in various colors and there's also um, various um, what they call densities, basically how many lights per inch or what have you. And it comes in huge strips like this. You can get this, I don't know, probably all the way up to like 20 feet long or more. This is just one foot. And you can cut it off into segments. Each, where you see this these connectors right here, that's where you can make a cut. So you can cut this off into three different three light segments and then increase that to six or nine or twelve, whatever you need. Whatever you need. And to use this stuff, all you have to do is solder on your power supply. Plus, minus, very simple there. I got this uh, just hooked up real quick to a nine volt battery so I can play around exactly which is the best mounting position. And bada boom. Check it out. Let's here. Turn off some turn off the lights real quick here. Ooh. That is pretty slick. So this is it's like maybe twenty-five LEDs. Imagine how uh, much space twenty-five regular LEDs would take up. So this is some pretty cool stuff here. It is very directional, which is good for this project. So, a lot of light out the front, very little out the bottom or the top. So that means my light leak issues is not going to be that uh, that much of a an issue. Um, no, I'll leave the lights out. So I'm just playing around with how to install this into the hood. Still trying to figure out what's the best way. It's kind of hard to tell what it's going to look like right now because you know 90% of this is going to be painted over. It's just the uh, the windows that are going to be lit. So I am leaning towards just running this up straight against the windows here. The only issue is there's going to be hot spots wherever one is exactly in front of a window. So there is a way to fix this. Now what I have here is just a simple drinking straw. Uh, specifically it's from Subway. It's a opaque white drinking straw. And you can use material like this to diffuse light from LEDs. So now I get all these hot spots. I cut this in half obviously. And I can put it over this stuff and see all the hot spots are well, they're not gone, but they're greatly diffused. And so I was thinking about doing something like this, then gluing the straw to the windows, and then gluing the lights to the straw. Uh, the only issue with this is that the uh, the straw is much narrower than the window, so it doesn't cover completely. So I need to find a material that's wider 
but that does the uh, same job. Hopefully, if it's wider, it will uh, still carry the light all the way across. It should. Um, kind of rummaging around the house looking for something I can use or something I could chop up. Uh, I'm leaning towards wax paper. I hear that works pretty well. Uh, I don't have any right now, so I gotta go buy a hundred foot roll of wax paper and use six inches of it. But get some lights back on here. The idea I'm going for now is just taking the wax paper and gluing it along the inside of the windows and then going back and gluing the LED tape either directly to the wax paper or sort of slightly above it so this is pointing down just a little bit it's like glue the LED tape just on one edge so it's like that and then the wax paper will help diffuse the light and if I do that there's not going to be a huge issue of a uh, light leak. If I get a little I'm perfectly happy with that. I just hope once it's all together you don't see the, the, uh, the mechanism that's delivering the light if you look underneath it. That's the one problem with this kit. It's so tall it makes it easy for people to see underneath and see all the working bits which if it was low wouldn't be an issue. Height is a problem. So yeah, that's it for now. Um, I'm going to toy around with some things, see if I have something else that I can use. Um, sorry, I was just thinking, I think scotch tape might work too. But I don't think I have any wide enough. It's got to cover the whole height of the windows. Might not be opaque enough either. So yeah, there we go. Uh, let me go find something.